Hello and welcome to my channel. This is Lisa with Lisa's Faith and Scripture Writing Channel. I am excited to be here today. I'm excited to get into my prayerful planner. Here are my prayers, scripture writing, and journaling prompt. Today is May, uh, May 11th and we are in the month of May and we are doing scripture writing and journaling prompt. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I'm excited to have you here. I'm excited to share God's word with you and how he speaks to me through scripture writing and through the journaling prompts that are provided through the prayerful planner. Now, I don't have an actual prayerful planner. This is actually emailed uh, and posted in the Facebook group page, and I can get it either way. And I, use, I print these off and use them. It also comes with a page that you can print on sticker paper or label paper or whatever. And I love this month's design. I haven't really printed it out yet, but this is what the little bit of pieces I can show you right here. Um, as far as um, the artwork, I love this compass and these pictures. There's Polaroids and then this little moped. It says, follow Jesus. This is the theme of the month. And the blues are just beautiful and I'm excited. So I decided to highlight with blue. And today is May 11th. Now I am filming on May 11th and I'll be uploading on May 11th. Um, but I normally try to have this ahead of time and did not get around to it because life is crazy. I have a lot of things going on, a lot of changes. I'm leading up to my son's last 36 days of school and he will be graduating from high school. So it's like, okay, hold your breath because here it comes. It's happening here. Uh, as you saw before, I wrote some scripture. I'm going to put my journaling prompt and scripture writing phrase here away, but I wrote um, scripture down. I've done my praise, my meta, my health, and I've written down the little things that I need to know coming up as far as the uh, journaling prompt and what we're going to write on in scripture. Now, so today on in my uh, scripture writing and journaling prompt um, here, we're doing May 11th, the 11th day, and we're working on John 12, 25, and 26. What do I sacrifice for Jesus? And that is an amazing question. What do I sacrifice for Jesus? And just in the couple minutes I've been thinking about it, I'm realizing I'm not doing enough. There's so much more that he would like for me to do. And that's something I don't really want to face. So I'm curious to see what the scripture says that relates to the journaling prompt and how he's going to guide me through that. And then um, I have Matthew 6, 19. I wrote this from the Amplified. This is the verse of the day in you version. And I love it. It's Jesus speaking here. And it's a good reminder. It kind of ties in in the sermon series my church is doing in the Exodus. Because um, all I could think of here while reading this verse is how pharaohs in Egypt were buried with all their belongings and all their gold and all their, you know, miniature figurines of servants and all these things they hope to have in the afterlife, right? To give them the maximum amount of comfort, which sounds very boring. Um, <laughs> and yet God doesn't say that's what we should be doing. And this is what he says we should be doing. And I'm going to pull my iPad here. We're just going to take a look at the scripture on the screen because it looks better than my handwriting and it says here do not store up for yourselves material treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal and I just like I said it just took me back to what we were talking about Pharaoh and Egypt and all the things materially that they have and you know, when a pharaoh dies, that's what they do. They take all, they they en encase all their stuff with them. Now, did it stay there? No, moths got to it. Um, things were broken into, whether sanctioned by Egyptian government or Egyptian leaders at the time, and then or um, whether you know criminals broke into the tombs of pharaohs and stuff like that. We want to store up our treasures in heaven. We do not want to store our treasures here on earth because we can't take them with us. And everything is perishable here on earth until Christ returns. So, you know, that was a great reminder for today that, you know, what we value the most, um, you know, align that with God 
and see what he tells you about it. So that's that's awesome. I love that. I did say, um, uh, well, before I get into my praise and my health and stuff, I do want to read the verse of the day for um, the actual prayerful planner because um, that is important. And it's up here at the top, and I want to be able to highlight it. So it says here, Ah, sovereign Lord, you have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and outstretched arm. Nothing is too hard for you. Jeremiah twenty three seventeen. Nothing's too hard for the Lord. Nothing's too difficult. I mean, he created everything just by speaking everything. So what makes us think anything is going to be too hard for him? Um, I, I really... Forget that. I hate that I forget that, but I do. I do forget that, and I shouldn't. Um, and I thank the Lord that He is um, great and powerful, and nothing is too hard for Him. So I'm going to highlight this real quick, just to acknowledge that I read it, and then uh, move on to... Um, my praise and my health. So Lord, I praised the Lord today that I, I thanked him for my husband's tra safe travels. He is a civilian contractor in the Navy on a ship and they pulled into po port and they are in Rome. It's publicly announced. I'm allowed to say it because the Navy already said it. So that's no big deal. Um, well, they're in Italy. Somehow he's in Rome and he's spending a few days in a hotel with some of the other guys on the ship. And they're going to be sightseeing and visiting the sites. I think they're going to the Vatican and the Basilica and all those places. So um, I'm just thankful he's there. He gets this opportunity because what we uh, have decided just yesterday as I was talking to him and he pulled into port. This will be his last port visit for the rest of his life. Um, if he's going to go anywhere around the world, it is under plane tickets and ships that we purchase to go on, not because he's paid to do it as a job. Um, 20 years active duty service, four and a half years of civilian contractor, and he is finally done with Navy life. And that is where we're at right now. Um, so we will be moving and that will be changing a lot for our uh, for my weekly um, videos and I pray that I can keep up with just enough um, to keep content coming um, during the transition of packing and moving and getting moved and um, all the things and we may actually be moving even though my husband doesn't have a job lined up in a new place. So he's just ready to move because if he stays at his job past a certain point, that means he will have to deploy again, and he, which is his job. He's, that is his requirement. And then he, not only will he have to deploy, but he'll be gone over Christmas again, and that'll be two years in a row where he's gone over Christmas. And our son's a Christmas Eve baby, though he's turning 24 this year. I mean, he's just tired of being gone over Christmas and missing his birthday, so... Prayers for that, if you feel led to pray. Um, so that is going on. And then I pray for continued health and healing in my hands and my feet. I have neuropathy. Um, I am seeing some improvement. Um, diet has changed a lot. Uh, medications are helping. I had to remove a medication that was causing intensity and difficulty and painfulness. Um, to an extreme and after a few months of being off of it I finally feel a lot better and now I need to deal with the other thing differently so um, yeah a lot of health issues trying to figure that out and so I just keep praying for that but uh, thankful for what we have learned and how things have changed so here we go we are going to write about John 12 25 and 26 Here's the journaling prompt uh, right there, and I need to pull that verse up. Let's see. And then I'm going to start with the ESV. We're going to read three versions of this um, in order to kind of get a good grasp. I always recommend a, two or three versions of the Bible verses that you're reading, especially if you're only reading a couple, to get full context and full understanding um, of what is being said. 
and I, it always helps me to be clear on what God's trying to tell me. So here's the ESV version on 1225. It says here, whoever loves his life loses it, and whoever hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, he must follow me. And where I am, there will my servant be also. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. That is just, that's one of those verses that you hear a lot of sermons on and a lot of people talk about. And it just brings comfort because you've heard it so much. All right, so the NIV version of the uh, John 25, 12, 25, and 26 says, Anyone who loves their life will lose it, while anyone who hates their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me. I don't even have it angled for you, right? I'm sorry. And where I am, my servant also will be. My father will honor the ones who serve me. So that's very close to the other. And then the Amplified, let's see if there's anything added to that. So 25, 3, 25. Oh, there is some added to it. Okay, 26. Oh, wow, a lot added to this one. Okay, so in the Amplified, which is a literal translation and it's amplified um, with definitions and um, amplification of meanings of words, and that is what we're going to read here. Uh, the one who loves his life eventually does, uh, eventually loses it through death. I mean, just reading that first sentence, the, the added eventually and through death just made a whole different vision in my brain, in my mind, on what they're saying here. I love this. So the one who loves his life eventually loses it through death. But the one who hates his life in this world and is concerned with pleasing God. See, there you go. I wouldn't have thought that when I read the other versions. And is concerned with pleasing God will keep it for life eternal. If anyone serves me, he must continue to faithfully Follow me without hesitation, holding steadfastly to me and conforming to my example in living and, if need be, suffering or perhaps dying because of faith in me. And whoever I am in heaven's glory, there will my servant be also. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. Who? That's, that's a lot to think about. That really puts in perspective who Jesus is, who you are, and what you get to choose. You either get to choose um, the life here on earth and just ignore God and, and not bring him in, or you can choose to serve him and uh, follow Jesus and then get this honor put on you by the Heavenly Father, our God, in heaven. That's where we'll be. I mean, that is just so beautiful. That is so amazing. And the glory behind that, the just, just all the awe feelings of all I got to do is follow him and be and faithfully, you know. And the, And the cool thing is, when I'm not faithful, he is, and he keeps pulling me back to him. This is not a one or done. You you have to be perfect all the way to the end. This is, all right, let's do this. I got you, and I'm getting you through it, and you're going. I'm going to hold on to you faithfully, and I'm asking you to hold on to me faithfully. And when you can't, keep coming back to me because I will hold on to you. And that that just gives so much relief in our life here on earth, that really it takes the cares away of anything that we might be worried about, it might be concerned about. Um, it just can really sustain us and move us through to the next area. That's just beautiful. So here's the question. What do I sacrifice for Jesus? <laughs> 
Now that I've read that out loud, that especially the Amplified version, I don't sacrifice enough for Jesus. I couldn't make a list long enough to go, I sacrifice enough for Jesus. So what do I sacrifice? That is the good question. I need to really reflect. I'm not sure how I can answer that or if I can't answer that because I'm very selfish and I don't like to sacrifice myself. I will sacrifice and help other people. I don't always do it with a joyful heart. I don't, don't always do it in a positive way to myself. I want to. I used to be able to do that. I haven't been able to do that in a very long time. But am I sacrificing those same things for Jesus? Um, that's, that's the question I need to ask myself. So I'm going to break away here. I'm going to write things down and I will go over them and I will be right back. That was amazing. Um, I wrote down the Amplify version, which always is my favorite. And um, because I get better comprehension and understanding about what's being said, I've already talked about that. But the journaling prompt, what do I sacrifice for Jesus? I wasn't sure what I could say. Because what do I really sacrifice? I am a woman in the United States who has basically lived a very comfortable life and lifestyle though I've hurt though I have sacrificed I you know there's you know I've raised two sons with autism my husband was active duty navy and still deploys and separations and stuff like that and we're still tied together and very strong in our relationship and our faith in our church it's still one of those things where I'm like okay but where have I really sacrificed what what is the sacrifice that he's asking about here in um, the scripture. So I said, Lord, I pray to you to show me what what I do sacrifice for Jesus. My life in comfort, like I was saying, is hard to, it is, uh, I find it hard to step out and truly be a sacrifice for Jesus. I'm surrounded by faith believers. I rarely, and rarely do I leave my home. I do sacrifice my time and energy to help fellow believers in my home. Uh, group and church family um, and raising my autistic sons. I, I do run on sentences all the time, so I do apologize for teachers and grammar people out there. <laughs> but most of those things, I do not feel like what I was doing was, a, I believe, a sacrifice. Uh, should uh, What a sh sacrifice should feel like. Um, uh, help me to see you and my sacrifice for you, Jesus, is basically what I was saying. Um, without saying <laughs> proper grammar words. <laughs> anyway, so that was my journal prompt because even though it poses a journal prompt question almost here, what do I sacrifice? You're not, you may not always have A, B, C, D writ being able to written down. This is my sacrifices. Yay, I answered the question. There's no right or wrong answer. There is no proper answer. There is just your answer and um, your heart with the Lord. And that is what I have here. This is what I'm doing right here. And that that was a lot. <laughs> um, it, it's getting me to think. It's getting me re refocused on him 
and um, where I'm at right now. So I hope that helped. And if it did, or if it sparked something in your thought process and the way you wanted to communicate with the Lord, um, let me know in the comments below or, you know, just kind of give me emoji that you liked the new content I was giving and things like that. I'm going to go ahead and zoom out of this and do my prayer box. I think I'm going to do a checklist prayer box um, with some of my stickers and just lay down a few stickers and then close out this video. So I will be right back. Okay, I am back. So I have my um, sophisticated florals and my faith uh, happy planner books. And then I have um, my Sarah Marie sticker, um, reusable sticker book, where I have put her courage to plan uh, stickers in here. And these are the ones I have left. Um, a lot of these I usually use in my um, hourly plan with me's, but I thought I'd pull these out as well because I love her quotes and things that she's got in here. So that's really cool. So I wanted to make sure I had everything I needed. And then I might use some washi. I do like using the washi and making that extra square. Let's see what I got. All right, let's see what I got here. I'm trying to, most of this is Christmas washi on this roll here, but a few of them are not. Like these are snowflakes. That's a bow tie. This I think I might use though. Um, it's just blue and it might go what I'm doing here. So, and then I want to get my ruler here to help me cut the washi and do all that. So how are you guys doing in your walk and your faith? Are you struggling? Are you um, keeping your head up, <laughs> keeping it above water, as they say, and, and really, you know, Digging, digging in and really trying to, um, you know, follow things out with Christ. Um, I know I have gone up and down quite a bit with God in my walk. Um, I am getting ready to hit a, like I said, a new thing in my life where um, God is moving us. My husband wants to finally moved to the area, our forever place. And yeah, it's a little bit scary. I mean, we've not moved without Navy assistance in probably 25 years. So um, there's no detailer to tell you, okay, this is the job you're going to have. This is the duty station you're going to get. And um, here's, here's where you can pick to live. Um, we just get to decide and he wants to move back to Kentucky, which has always been the dream. That's where he's from outside Lexington area, somewhere around in there. And then, um, we are going to just figure things out, but God is really several months now has been pushing us to step out in faith in that. And especially now that he has decided he cannot physically and mentally go through another deployment again. Um, it's not healthy for him to keep doing it. It's just exhausting. <laughs> so we, we are agreeing with God that we can't do it anymore. And um, God is opening doors for those things. In fact, God um, gave, granted my husband an interview in his field of study that he, um, he wasn't that terribly excited, but he was excited that he got an interview. And so um, that was recommended. And so we'll see how that works and how well that is. And he's in the running for a new interview for another job um, that he would really love to have. And um, so we'll see when that opportunity presents itself, um, where he goes there. Uh, but August is the time frame he wants to be out of the house and moved. So that's that's a little scary um, because he may or may not have a job lined up. And but if he stays at his current job in August, then they're going to be like, well, you've if you're going to stay, you're going to have to deploy. <laughs> so and he's like, uh, no, I don't want to do that. So regardless if he has a job or not, we want to have our house sold. We want to have. Um, everything packed up and ready to move or moving 
um, in the direction of Kentucky from the coast of Virginia where we're at right now. Um, things like that. So that's just what we're kind of facing right now. I don't know what's going to happen. And I have got to sit back here and be the headquarters of everything and move f things forward from here. And that's a little scary for me. I'm, I'm, I'm used to doing that kind of job as far as, you know, duty transfers, but not so much something we want to do. And the cost of just doing a move. Oh, shoot. I didn't move it over far enough. Um, oh, I'm going to have to leave it where it is. <laughs> Toward the paper. <laughs> that's okay. I wanted that to be on the wipe and slide this over, but that ripped, so I'm not going to worry about it. Um, yeah, it's... Oh my gosh. Can't believe we're moving. That, that's just all there is to it. I can't believe we're moving. And I I knew it was coming. I just didn't realize. It's one of those hurry up and wait things. And we're just kind of like, okay, hurry up. We're doing this. We're doing this. Okay. Okay. Now we're doing this. <laughs> so um, just you're never prepared for something like that. And um and yeah, and somebody like me who likes to be in control and have their ducks in a row, God is really testing those limits of, okay, are you really going to trust me in this? Are you really going to allow me to show you um, how you can trust me in this situation and provide what is necessary? I think I want to use these little boxes here. There's one and two. These are so, I love these outlines, drawings here of the flowers. So pretty. Oh, that's cute. I like that. <laughs> Just kind of threw it down that way. And then, is there something else that I want to put? I think I've got these boxes and then maybe, hmm, I want something to go down here, but I'm not sure what that is yet. And then maybe one of these. Yeah, that's what I'll do. <sighs> there we go. I like it. Let's see. And I could put a quote. What is a good quote that's going to help me in this particular... Um, situation... It might have to be that faith over fear because I am in fear a little bit mode and I, yeah, it's going to have to be that one because, well, I like this one too. Faith is a deliverer of the promises of God. Nope, faith over fear. <laughs> I like that other one, but it just didn't read out the way I wanted. All right, so there we go. Okay. Faith over fear. That is my mantra for the past couple of years. Um, just trying to get through all the changes and difficulties of the past years. And you would think remembering that would help me to um, move forward in something as crazy as having no future job yet in a new area and moving to that area. I just, I just, wow. I'm like, wow, this is intense. So um, I'm just going to pray for our move. Um, my husband. Future. Job. Um, 
or move, my husband's future job. Um, let's see, son's transition to a new area. And then pray um, we keep our faith during the move. And rely on God for his provisions. Yeah, I think that's what I want to put. Because um, what makes me nervous is the past few years since 2019, I paid off um, from 2019 to 2020, a 15 month time period. I um, I say I, we paid off, my husband um, earned the money and then I paid the bills and we paid off um, $44,000 worth of, of debt, consumer debt. Of course, we have the mortgage on the house and and that's fine. Um, the house appreciated very well during this pandemic time. And if we go to sell it, you know, we're definitely selling it more than what we bought it for. So we are above there and that is really good. But oh my gosh, um, all that hard work since we've paid off the debt, going into savings, building the emergency fund. We have a three month emergency fund and then I'm saving every overtime check that he has and putting money aside for my Roth for next year and all these other things. This is all on my budgeting channel. If you watch that, um, letting go of some of that and living off of that savings and that decision has, that's, I think that's what's really getting to me because I worked so hard in my own mind in my, what, with his provision, but it feels like my own strength. Um, and I don't want to let go of the savings just to carry us through until my husband gets another job and all of that. Uh, trusting Jesus in that is going to be very difficult for me. And I, I will just be honest. And he loves that kind of honesty. And I just need to pray and work with him and have him bring me to that point of, okay, I'm going to trust you on this. So um, I'm going to pop this back into my notebook here. All right, here's my prayers, uh, scripture writing, journaling prompts, and um, today's um, scripture writing, journaling prompt for the day. And I like how it turned out. Um, I love the colors and all the things. And this is what I used today. So I really do hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more of my videos, please subscribe to my channel. And I hope you have sincerely an amazing and blessed day. Bye.